Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So this is the follow-up video to the previous one you'll have seen. So this is going to be the swatching video to go with the haul video I just posted. Um, first up, I'm going to be using my Strathmore Visual Journal mixed media paper pad to swatch out the pens and things that I got in this, um, in the haul. So I'm not going to, um sit here and write out all the different color names and stuff but i will go through them as we swatch these out so first up we have the zebra uh, mild liner creative marker double ended soft mild color water resistant colors so i'm just gonna take these out quickly they're double ended but I th so we'll see what that's like and these are going to be kind of like a softer, less harsh version of a highlighter, I guess. Um, and they're really popular with like in bullet journaling and stuff like that from what I've seen. So this is like the purple. I don't know if they even have like a colour name. Okay, so this one's called Lavender. And then it's got a bullet nib as well. And then we have, this one is Fuchsia. Marigold. And we have summer green. Citrus green. Cyan, lemon yellow, coral pink. Apricot, and finally dark grey. So that's the mild liners. Some really nice colours. I can see these working really well for like making lists and stuff like that. Then next up we have the Faber-Castell brush pen or pit artist pens lettering set. So this is the greens sort of set. Ooh. So there's a mix in here. So we have some
Okay, so time to do the second half of the swatching video with the water soluble <laughs> materials this time. I've got some uh, pretty basic watercolor paper here. I think it's um, just some cotton watercolor paper I had lying around. And um, yeah, so we're gonna jump straight into it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this first section to music and just go through the swatching process. And then at the end, I'll come back and talk through the different the different materials and things that we're, look, uh, that we're going to be looking at today and um, let you know my thoughts about any of the different like colours, paints, etc. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy listening to some music whilst watching the swatching process. Okay, so all the swatching has been done. I am back now just to go over all the details of the materials we swatched and my thoughts on my initial thoughts on them and everything like that. So first up at the top here we have the four Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarel watercolour pencils that I picked up. We've got the Prussian Blue, Dark Olive, Beryl Green and Payne's Grey. They work just as well as any of the other Caran d'Ache Museum Aquarel pencils that I have. They are, they go down nice and pigmented. They, this paper is fairly textured um, for pencils, but they went down well, they reactivated well. And as you can see, wherever I have wet the pigment, wet the pencils, like all of the pencil marks has, have dissolved under the water. So it's really nice and smooth finish. 
And then next up we have the set of Spectrum Noir um, graphite tint or tinted graphite pencils. And these came in the color in a 12 um, pencil set. We had the colors Adobe, Moss, Blue Verdita, Heritage Blue, Chianti, Dusty, Dusky Lilac, Clay, Earth Green, Warm Grey, oops, sorry, Warm Grey, Amory Grey, Cool Pewter, and Seaweed. Now these ones, they did reactivate well. Some of them were a little bit paler in um, when reactivated, like the color was a bit paler than I was expecting. However, um, they did reactivate pretty well. Some of the colors, um, most of them seem to have managed to get up the pencil marks under the water, but these two blues and the Adobe, not so much. Like a few of the colors, you can still see the pencil marks under there and some of them less so. So it's a bit hit and miss in terms of how well the pencil dissolves, but I think it'd be a really fun um, sketching tool like if you want to sketch something while you're out and about and then add a bit of water just to um, do some subtle shading and things like that. But in a situation where you don't mind still having some pencil marks underneath. Um, I also think it, it might depend on the paper. Like if you have smoother paper, then the pencil might dissolve better, etc. So it might take a bit of playing around with. Um, and then here is the navy blue Holbein acrylic wash and the sap green. Um, now I accidentally squeezed out a little bit too much paint um, on here, but <laughs> I, I did label it, but I ended up covering it up with the paint just to use up the paint properly. Um, so that's how those turned out. They're nice, nice and matte now that they've dried. And I'll quickly just run a wet brush over it so you can see they don't, it doesn't reactivate. Anyway, moving on, this top section here was the Graphitint paint pan set. So the colors we have are autumn brown, russet, meadow, green gray, slate green, ocean blue, steel blue, dark indigo, aubergine, juniper, port, and graphite gray. These work really well. They're really nice and dark and saturated. Um, I didn't have time to swatch out the pencils for this set today, but I do have some of the same colors in pencils and they reactivate more like the Spectrum Noir ones in that the color's a little bit more subtle than this. So I think actually these along with the pencils would be a really nice, like, a complimentary set to work with. And then here we have the handmade watercolors that I swatched out. I couldn't find my October <laughs> swatch card, so I don't know what happened to that, but I couldn't find it. So we just swatched out the two I had. So we have here Midnight Blue, Van Dyke Brown, which was very hard to reactivate, um, Red Mica, which I guess means it has some glitter in it, but I cannot, can't see any on the swatch. And then Vagone Green, which is also a little bit of a weaker color in general. It's an earth green color. Then we have um, Spice Pumpkin Latte, Honeydew is the yellow. Then we have Memento Mori, and finally Christmas Tree. And that one does have a bit of like sort of mica shimmer to it. Um, I'm not sure if it will pick up on camera. And then finally the four half pans that I picked up. So we had Hokkaido Orange, Cyan Green, Royal Scarlet and Dan's Ultramarine Blue. Um, so those were the swatches on this first sheet. And yeah, the handmade paints um, reacted really well, especially the pans were really nice quality paints. The Midnight Blue was beautiful. That's like an Indenthrone Blue, it looks like. The yellow was uh, really pretty as well. Um, the Van Dyke Brown and Vagone Green aren't my favorites, but I'm not a huge fan of these like earthier greens that are hard to reactivate. And that Van Dyke Brown was very hard to reactivate. Um, but yeah, otherwise really nice paints, definitely worth checking out if you are interested in handmade watercolors and especially if you're based in the UK because then shipping isn't too expensive. Then for the watercolors and I, like I said, these haven't fully dried, they're mostly dry. Some of the mass tone sections aren't completely dry yet, but, um, I don't have time to wait for these to completely dry out before I have to run off. Um, so I'll run through really quickly. So these four here and then these three in the middle are the new paints that I got. These two are the paints I already had, which I was telling you about. So this first one here is Winsor & Newton's Lemon Yellow Deep, 
which is pigment PY159. I forgot to put down like a black line underneath all of these to check for opacity, but this one is marked on the label as being semi-opaque, the Lemon Yellow Deep. Then I compared it with Schmincke's um, new super granulating paint, Vulcan Volcano Yellow, which is also PY159. Um, this one is marked as being transparent and it does look more transparent than the Winsor & Newton version. It also looks darker, like it looks like a slightly darker shade of yellow than the Winsor & Newton one. Um, it's a bit hard to tell on this paper, it's also hard to tell with yellows anyway, but it's definitely granulating. It's fairly subtle as far as granulation goes, um, but I'd say even the Winsor & Newton Lemon Yellow Deep has a bit of granulation to it. Um, like I said, it's very textured paper, but it's a bit hard to tell. There we go. Can you see the granulation there a little bit? Um, and then down here, we have uh, Cadmium cadmium Red Light by Schmincke, which is PR108. I don't have a lot of cadmium red paints, um, but this is, but PR108, so the cadmium red pigment, comes in various shades, so you can get a light, a medium, and a dark. So this one's the cadmium red light. It's the most orange version of cadmium red. Um, whereas the volcano red, which is the new one I got from the super granulating Schmincke range, um, is also PR108, but it looks like it's a darker version of PR108 than cadmium red light. But it's the only one I had to compare it with. And you can see that the volcano red is vastly more granulating than the cadmium red light. Um, like this one doesn't granulate at all. So you can see in comparison, the cadmium red light, um, that Lemon Yellow Deep by Winsor & Newton does have some slight granulation there. It's, it's really hard to tell because it is such a light color anyway, but in person when I look at it, I can see some there. And then here we have the Da Vinci colors. So this one was Da Vinci Yellow, which was PY154. Then we have the Cobalt Turquoise, which was PB36. Um, and then we had the sap green, which let me just double check the pigments. That was PG7 and PY42 for the sap green. It's a really nice sap green. Um, and the cobalt turquoise has some nice granulation to it as well. And then here we have the um, permanent alizarin quinacridone, which is PV19. It's hard to come by a permanent alizarin crimson that is single pigment. There's only a couple out there. And so I really wanted to try this one out. And then we have their quinacridone gold, which is uh, P PY150 and PR206. It's a really lovely quinacridone gold. They also had another color um, there that I almost got, but decided not to get because it was called quinacridone, it was called alizarin quinacridone gold or quinacridone alizarin gold. I can't I can't remember, but it was essentially a mix of their alizarin, crimson, and quinacridone gold, and that was the colour. So I just, um, you'll have seen in the video that I just mixed these two together to swatch out what would have been alizarin gold, or very close to their alizarin gold, had I bought that tube. And I was like, well, I'm buying these two, so I don't need to buy that one, because um, it's easy to mix. And if I ever pour this out into like these tubes into a palette, and I want an alizarin gold, I can just mix the paints in the palette or in a pan or in a well on a palette and have it pre-mixed ready to go if I wanted to do that. Um, so those are the paints that I swatched today. Um, definitely loving this Volcano Red. I think that's really beautiful, really lovely um, granulating red. And I like this yellow. I, not a huge fan of the Lemon Yellow Deep by Winsor & Newton because it is a bit opaque and it has, it's not, it doesn't have like white in it. It's not actually chalky, but it has that ch chalky look to it compared to the Volcano Yellow, which is, first of all, I like this shade better than that one. And I also like that it's more transparent than that one. There again, it's hard to tell on camera without having a line underneath to check to show the opacity. But in person looking at it, you can definitely see those differences in real life, as it were. Um, so yeah, that's that's my opinion on those. I'm really happy with the Da Vinci colors I picked up. I love all of them. Um, there were definitely more I could have picked and I could have got, and maybe next time when I go back to the US, I might pick up a few more, but um, I really don't need any more paint, as I mentioned before. Like I have more than enough paint now to last me a long time, 
but I really wanted to try out the brand and so I picked up a few in my favorite colors so I know I will use them and wanted to like see how see how they were and I might do some comparisons with other variations um, in the future. I'm thinking of starting a new series on this channel at some point comparing like different types of sap green or different types of quinacridone gold, different types of alizarin crimson. Not in like, I know that um, Otto Kano, Dr. Otto Kano here on YouTube has done what she calls her colossal color showdown where she does like really in depth and detailed like comparisons of on different um, colors of the same name, like quinacridone and gold or cobalt turquoise or whatever. Um, so it won't be, I'm not replicating what she did. That's not what I'm planning on doing. It's more of just a higher level overview of the different colors, just to see the differences in the shades available. Um, you know, like a sap green can look very different depending on what brand you're looking at because it's typically a mix of pigments as well. So it'd be interesting to see what the different variations are and um, same with the lizard and crimson and some of the unquinacridone golds, um, more so the ones which are multi-pigmented colors. It's interesting to see what the different variations are available out there. So I thought that might be a fun series to start at some point as well this year. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this little swatching video and um, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.